Well, good evening, everybody. Again, it's good to be out here, be able to have a Bible that I can open, a Bible that I can look at, a Bible that I can study. I'm in the book of Isaiah tonight. I'm in a a place that I don't believe I've ever brought a message that I can remember. Um, I see in one place here, and there might be more that I just don't see, but we find in the top part of verse 13 where it says, Therefore thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Lord God. Um, this tells me that the Lord God is doing the talking and Isaiah is just writing it down. And, you know, when I look at a verse, I may not know the, the history of the verse. I may not know the background of the verse and I might not read half the Bible to fully get the full context. But I have a tendency that when I see a verse, I immediately ask myself, how does that verse apply to today? How does a verse actually apply to our world in 2022 and I try to see how much of the word can apply to our day now there must have been a reason for the Bible to record therefore thus saith the Lord God he's talking through the man Isaiah but again, when I read the verses that I want to read, I see a message that very well could be aimed at our day. Now, maybe Isaiah's got a whole nother um, rim of intelligence, which I'm sure he does. And obviously, in his day, 2022 didn't exist. So, I'm sure that he probably would admit that the verses in the scripture that he's writing back in the day in Isaiah 65 was primarily for his day, but I always look at the scripture of how does it apply in our day. Now, you just have to sort of hear me out and let me show you what I'm thinking when I read these uh, two verses. I'm reading one verse to get the context for the, for the next verse. If you drop down the verse number 17, The same Lord God that was talking in verse 13 is the same Lord God that is speaking down here in verse 17. You notice that it says, For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth. Now, he's got a new heaven of where Jesus is today. It's a heaven that you and I don't get to see yet because we're still alive. People that will go and say that I died and went to heaven, I would question I would question that. I'm not going to say that a person can't have a dream. I can't uh, make fun of someone that says that they've seen mom and daddy. I can't. I can't relate to any of that. But the Bible verse says here, I create a new heavens and a new earth. 
Now, in that time, he's letting the writer know that this is what he's going to do. But even Isaiah does not see the new heavens and the new earth in his day. He can't relate to this new heavens and new earth in his day, the day that he wrote this down. And then he says, and the former shall not be remembered. Meaning the past world, meaning the past world when we leave this world and we go to the new world of the new heavens and the new earth, we won't remember the past world that we're living in today. Um... I can prove that. Lazarus ain't meditating on anything that he had down here in this life when he was hungry and when he was having to be carried to the gate, waiting on the rich man to feed him. He ain't thinking about that today. Today, he's in that new heaven and new earth far as the spirit man is concerned. His fleshly man, his bones are still down here in the dust of the earth. His body was buried, but his spirit man went to be with God. But what is the Lord saying? If the Lord is saying this, which I believe he is, for behold, I create new heavens and a new earth. Well, that hadn't happened at the time that Isaiah was writing this down, but I believe it's going to happen. And the former shall not be remembered, meaning the former past things shall not be remembered, nor come into mind. I hope that I never remember nothing about this world down here when I go to be with him. I've got a friend that died back in September of last year. I miss him. I still miss him. I talk about him all the time. Me and him was very, very close. But here's the thing. He's not meditating on what he left behind when he died. All of the stuff that he owned is still here. I look at it almost every day. The shop that that man run, it, it, there has not been a tool touched in that business since the day that he passed away, far as I know. I think what I'm trying to say is he ain't worried about that shop today. He's got something way, way better. Because it says right here, And the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. Now this is the verse here that qualifies the next verse, which is the message verse. But verse 18 is the, is the main verse that I wanted to use. But be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. But be ye glad. There's a lot of people that are not glad because God has not created new things today. Now, we we see heaven. I believe there's a place called heaven. I don't see heaven with my natural eye. I can't hardly see heaven with my spiritual eye. Do I believe that heaven is there? Yes, I do. Do I believe that he's gone to prepare a place for me? Yes, I do. The Bible says that he's coming back 
for the ones that believe in him. Do I believe that? Yes, I do. Do I believe that he shed his blood on the cross in order for him to go to that place and prepare me a place? I believe that that is exactly what he's doing. I do not believe he has forgot not one word that I have spoke in the video or in the nursing home or in the church services, or anywhere that I spoke, I believe that God has every message recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life in order for honor to come to the Lord's name. I believe that. But be ye glad and rejoice forever in that day which I create. See, he's creating now. He's getting ready to set in order things that is going to be created for God's people. He's in heaven now, creating the place called heaven. He's talking about the new earth here. And then it says, For behold... I create Jerusalem a rejoicing. Let me ask you a question. This is the reason I'm doing the message out right here because of this verse right here. But be ye glad and rejoice. Is Israel rejoicing today? Now, I'm not talking about so much the country of Israel. When I see but be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. He says, for behold, I create Jerusalem of rejoicing. Well, when you read the word Jerusalem, it's talking about God's people. I don't believe that he's referring to a Jerusalem that is just in the country of Israel. However big Jerusalem is, I think he's talking more in a wider scope when he uses the word Jerusalem. I think Jerusalem encompasses all of God's people, all of the believers, all of the Born again, saved child of God. I don't believe he's just talking about a little city in Israel. It could be a big city. I don't know how big Jerusalem is. Is he talking about just the city in the country of Israel? No, I happen to believe that he is creating and that what he wants to do he's telling the people of Jerusalem to be glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. Here's my point of the message today. Is Israel rejoicing? I don't happen to think so. I think Israel, far as God's people now, when I say the word Israel, Again, I'm not talking about the nation of Israel. I'm talking about the whole entirety of the believers. We're all under pressure right now. We that are born again, saved children of God is all waiting for this new to come that God is going to create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing. I don't happen to believe that Jerusalem today is rejoicing, not like they will. I think that the Jerusalem that's going to be rejoicing is going to be rejoicing when the, when Jesus Christ returns to get the church. That's when the beginning of the new heaven and the new earth begins, that we're still sort of like Isaiah is. We're still waiting on that transition time. I'm still waiting on that transition time. 
It says here, For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing. I don't see a lot of Christians doing a whole lot of rejoicing today. That's not to say that we have lost hope. I don't happen to believe that I have lost hope. I just don't see a whole lot of deep inner rejoicing. Not like it's going to be. Because right now, see, I'm still sitting in this life. I'm still sitting on earth. I'm still in my 63-year-old body. I still face things that are common to man. I still have a hurting body. I have eyes that don't see as good. I have a body that don't feel good all the time. I feel pretty good tonight. But it says here, Behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing. Is God's people rejoicing? You know, let me say it in another way. Take the the country of Jerusalem and the city of Jerusalem. Is the city of Jerusalem today in rejoicing? No, I honestly do believe that they're somewhat wondering what's going to happen to their nation. They see Iran building bombs. They see Russia doing what they will up there in Ukraine. And and they see so much stuff going on that little tiny little Israel is a lot like little David and the giant. But we know who won that battle with little David and the giant. And we also know who's going to win when they start throwing their arrows at Jerusalem. That's when God is going to say, "Uh uh-uh. Oh, no. Oh, no. See, right now, remember the old country song where Kenny Rogers sung, you got to know when to hold them and know when to fold them. God knows exactly how to hold them. And he also knows knows when to fold them. He knows that he's going to end up protecting the nation of Israel. But he's going to protect the child of God, whether they live in the state of Florida or whether they live anywhere else in the world. My point being, he's referring to Jerusalem to have a genuine rejoicing. And you notice that it says, and her people a joy. You know what? You can't rejoice without having the inner joy. The reason that there's so many people that are trying to rejoice and it ain't working, it very well might be that there's no joy inside them that makes them to rejoice. You got to have joy to have rejoicing. And so what is the Lord saying here? But be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. See, we, we, we don't see that creation yet. I believe it's coming. I believe it's at hand. I believe we are literally standing in the doorway of the church going home. I really believe that. I've been saying it for years. But you know what? The Lord heard me say it three or four years ago. You know what? There's a reward for someone that has that has high expectation of the coming of the Lord Jesus. The Bible even says there's a crown of rejoicing for people that are looking forward to his return. 
I done lived 63 years in this life. Do I want to experience the new life? I sure enough do. I sure enough do. Do I want to die today? No. No, I don't want to die. I want to stay here and make a video and make enough videos that there will be a current video the day of the rapture. I want there to be a current message on the day that I go home. I, I, that's what I want to do, and that's the reason I'm reading this verse right here. But be ye glad and rejoice. Are you rejoicing? It says rejoice forever in that which I create. We can't even rejoice in the things that he created down here for us today. For behold, I create Jerusalem of rejoicing. Again, he's not talking about the nation. He's talking about Jerusalem as God's people. No matter where they live all across the world, he's talking about the saved people. I create Jerusalem of rejoicing and a and her people a joy. You got to ask yourself a question. Do you have joy? Do you have real joy? Do you have real rejoicing? Something to meditate on anyway. Elderly Ministry is the YouTube channel. Elderlyministry.com is the website. You can go there and pull me up. If you need to talk, you need somebody to talk to, you want to text me, you want to email me, you want to call my cell, leave a message. I'll be glad to get with you. I thank y'all for watching. Make sure that you got something to rejoice over. It begins with salvation.